and professionals who have the scars to prove it. We ask the same five questions every week, providing you with chewable bits of expertise. I'm your host, Katie McEwen, the Procurement Girl, representing BuyerQuest, the most user-friendly procurement solution in the world. Tenure Talk streams live every Friday on LinkedIn and is available anywhere you get your podcasts. I'm so excited to introduce you all to our rock star guest today, Brian Hoffmeyer. He has a wealth of experience in consultative partner management, building, operating, implementing enterprise class software solutions. Currently, he's the Senior Vice President of Market Strategy at Beeline. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, Hoff. Thanks. Thanks so much for having me. Great to be here. Really looking forward to the discussion. Great, great. So for everyone listening, um, Hoff is uh, is also Brian. That's his nickname. Uh, came from his start in the industry. Uh, just a lot of Brian's out there in the world. So just to make it a little bit easier for everyone. So tell me a little bit about what you've been working on this year and what your focus is right now. Sure, sure. Glad to. Um, so as SVP of market strategies for Beeline, I wear a number of different hats. Sometimes it seems like four or five different hats. Um, I've been with the, the Beeline organization for about 15 years. Um, for those who don't know, Beeline is a vendor management system used to manage all types of contingent labor. And we were formed when two former competitors, IQ Navigator and Beeline merged together uh, back almost, almost four years ago now. Um, I came from the IQ Navigator side of, of that business and now we operate under the, the Beeline name. Um, and uh, so what I do for Beeline, kind of my three primary tasks that I, I do are one, I manage our global partner ecosystem, which consists of a wide variety of different kind of partners that really extend what Beeline does and add value to our customers. And those mm -hmm. partners range from managed service providers who are providing an outsourced service to our mutual client to a wide variety of technology and talent partners, one of whom is, is BuyerQuest. We partner with BuyerQuest. Um, to, so that the two companies working together can offer a full end-to-end -end total procurement management solution for everything that a company might buy from indirect goods to indirect services that Beeline manages. So that's one really important part of my job. Um, secondly, I sit on the Beeline strategy team. And um, in that role, I'm really looking at new markets that we might want to go into, things we might want to, de to develop from a product offering standpoint. So for example, um, one of the big trends in our industry is looking at how smaller companies can use a vendor management system. Traditionally, we've sold to large, you know, large sort of multinational enterprises, and we've started looking at how we can serve smaller companies as well. And then the final hat I, I do is really this one right here. Um, I have this deep passion about the importance of managing the contingent workforce and managing it well. And so I love to talk about, um, talk about that um, on podcasts with analysts. Um, I, you know, my CEO says I've never met a stage I didn't like, and we don't have physical stages these days, but uh, this is a, a virtual one anyway. <laughs> That's great. That's great. I love that. You, you've never had a stage you didn't like. That's awesome. Yeah, well, I can relate. That's, that's, that's a great trait, in my opinion. So who was that one person that really inspired your road to success? You know, whether it was a mentor or a coach or a teacher? Who was yeah. That one? yeah, I was thinking about this as I prepared. And it's really a hard question to answer because I'm, I'm so lucky to have had so many people and have so many people in my life that you know, serve in that role in different capacities. And I think that's really, you know, it's important, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a 101 kind of stuff, but it's, it's so important to cultivate that network of different people because they all provide different perspectives. But, you know, the person I was really thinking about is, that, is actually the woman who hired me at IQ Navigator over 15 years ago. Um, her name is Melissa Lieberman, and, and she hired me into um, IQ Navigator at the time's product management um, organization as an individual contributor. And I ended up working for Melissa in a couple of different roles um, over, over the years. And she just taught me so much first about, um, about the discipline of, of managing a software product and really helping that software product grow because that was very early in, in, in our history. And we were you know, building new functionality at a very rapid clip. And then later, you know, as I moved into a managerial role, she became that coach and really helped me expand um, my managerial skills. Because I think so often, you know, good individual contributors are put into managerial roles without a lot of training about how to be a manager. And that's, it's a rough transition when you first do it. 
And uh, so having that person to, to be a sounding board was, was great. And it's interesting, she and I have stayed in touch. She left, left the organization several years ago and is now an executive coach herself. That's the business that she went into. And, and so I still use her as somebody to you know, test ideas and get advice from. And, and you know, it's, it's been interesting to watch how our relationship has evolved from you know, manager and employee to, to friends, but, but still has that coaching sort of aspect to it. So I, it's a relationship I certainly very much value and you know, encourage everybody to, to try to find those in their lives and look for them. Yes, absolutely. And thankfully, you had a good mentor. You know, a lot of managers out there just don't think that there's a leadership component involved in what they do. And everyone that's had a bad boss knows exactly what that's like. So I'm sure you're everyone that works for you is very relieved that you've had her <laughs> in, in your history. That's Hopefully, that's we'll, 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 we'll have to check in with them and find out. <laughs> hey, you know what? Ignorance is bliss. We don't need to know. <laughs> if they're not complaining, I'm sure they're fine. Right. <laughs> so what would you say is the most innovative thing that you're seeing in the space right now? You've been in the space for a long time, so I'm sure you've seen a lot of changes. Yeah, you know, I mean, it goes without saying that this has been a crazy year that nobody expected, right? Um, and, but it's it's been a really interesting year from a contingent labor perspective, right? Because we've seen so many different things happen. You know, we work across so many different verticals um, in, our, in our client base. You know, we've got over 300 clients and really every major industry vertical is, is represented. And so we've seen some, you know, um, hospitality, transportation, you know, airlines that, you know, are obviously massively, massively impacted by, by COVID. And so have had to greatly reduce their use of contingent workers uh, as their businesses just you know suffer these severe downturns, but then there are others. I think financial services is a great example who've had this huge ramp up of their use of contingent workers um, because you know they're having to do things like bring people on to process um, small business loans that are part of the COVID relief packages, and and that's a great way. You know, contact contractors are a great way to do that. And so what that's forced us to do is really quickly react to this changing business world and say, what can we do to help our clients succeed? And so um, immediately, you know, when, when um, you know, everything around the pandemic started happening, probably in very early March, we formed a, a cross-functional COVID task force within Beeline to really look at what can we do to help our, our clients. And um, we interviewed clients, interviewed all of our partners, and very quickly rolled out some, uh, some functionality to help them better track um, where their contractors were. Are they working remotely? Can they work remotely? Do they have the equipment that they need? Because there was this wholesale shift from industries that said, you know, heck no, we can't have remote work to absolutely having to have remote work. And so we had to innovate very, very quickly there to pr provide that solution. The other thing that we did that was really important um, was around uh, what we call redeployment of contractors, or, and, and not just contractors, full-time workers. We wanted to provide a place um, for those people that were let go from their jobs to land and be tracked and kept in touch with so that when the, the economy starts to recover, companies can go back and get those people back because they already knew they were doing a great job for them. And you know, that's a much better way to hire than you sort of going greenfield. And so whether it's a, a contractor you had to let go or a full-time employee you had to let go that you want to bring back in as a contractor, that's, you know, creating this redeployment, excuse me, redeployment pool um, has, has really, really, um, you know, been a way to help our clients as the economy recovers. Because one thing we, we, we certainly know or hope to be true is that we think that when the economy does recover, no matter what that recovery looks like, it will start with contractors. That's what we've seen in every other economic downturn. People will start to use contractors first because you're unsure about what's really going to happen. And, and the expense, it's, it's obviously much less. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's an incredible idea. And that way these employers don't have to completely start over. They've already got that pool of people that they can pull from. So yeah. that's, that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, I hadn't heard of that. That's, that's really good to know. Yeah. So can you tell us one unique thing about you that maybe would surprise some of the folks in this space that maybe have known you for a while that be a little surprised? Well, I don't know if this is going to surprise people because it's pretty public, um, but it's something I'm really passionate about right now. So um, 
my favorite thing to do in the world is is to cook. I love cooking. Um, I've got the pig tattoo on my arm to to prove it. Um, That's so cool. And so uh, my wife and I, um, you know, our our sort of passion is is hosting people at our house. And so almost every weekend we have, you know, dinner parties, parties ranging from you know just one other couple to twenty five people. Um, and so when when this hit and we couldn't see our friends in person, it really really impacted us. And I, we were on a, on a Zoom happy hour with a couple of friends. And one of them said, well, why don't you start teaching us how to cook? And so that led to me um, uh, really sort of trying to grow my Instagram presence. So I regularly post uh, videos on my Instagram um, that, that show me you know, cooking and really trying to teach people how to do the things that I love to do. And, and it's really focused on giving them the, the technique so that they can take that technique and, you know, I know how to grill something, a grill a steak really well, and I can expand that knowledge into recipes that I want to make. And right now, my sort of passion project around that is I made what I was probably a dumb decision, but I'm trying to make a different taco every week for a year on Taco Tuesday. So um, I'm five weeks into that, into that uh, making a different taco every week. Um, and it's going to get really creative by the end, you know, with what constitutes a taco. So if anybody out there has taco recipe ideas, um, send them my way. <laughs> that is so awesome. So what's your Instagram handle so we can follow you? Um, it's Shayhoff, C-H-E-Z-H-O-F-F. Perfect. Perfect. We'll, we'll add that in the comments. Oh, that's perfect. So are you a big barbecue guy? Is that is that what's the deal with the pig? Um, I do love to barbecue. Um, the pig, I just, I love pork in all of its forms. And so uh, this, this pig came about actually at a, a Beeline customer conference. I was talking to a customer about my love of cooking and, and I'd, I'd been saying, you know, I wanted to get a, a tattoo to kind of represent that, both the love of cooking and bringing people together. And this, this tattoo was ultimately where it uh, came, came about. That's awesome. Oh, I love that. Well, I can't hardly boil water. So it'll be good to, to, to watch your Instagram page and get some ideas. Hopefully I can teach you a few things. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You, have you tried um, some barbecue pork tacos with pineapple? Have you done that? I, I have done, I've done a, a pineapple taco or a pork taco with, with uh, pineapple already. And that's one of my favorite tacos. I love that combination. I'm sort of regretting getting it out of the way early because now I can't make it for another year but uh <laughs> yeah it's a good taco you wouldn't think it but it, it really is I love that. so what's one piece of advice that you would give to folks that are trying to claw up the ranks and see some of the success that you've been able to to realize um yeah i mean this is i, I thought about this one and one is you know maybe don't always use claws you know try to use a, a friendlier <laughs> method but um <laughs> love you it. know one of the things that uh I, I really think is interesting is, is personality types. Um, so we recently partnered with a company called Tradeify that does a personality assessment. Um, and you know, it's sort of like a Myers-Briggs type assessment, but, the, but their version is, is done with a swipe left, swipe right kind of image interface that takes about 90 seconds and then tells you a lot about what's called your big five personality type. And I think it's really important for, for people to be aware of their personality type and the strengths and weaknesses it brings because everybody's personality, everybody's traits have strengths and weaknesses, no matter, you know, if, if you're the best person in the world or the worst, right? And um, so knowing about those is really important. So I encourage people to take those kinds of tests, pick one and think about what it means to them and then really work to emphasize your strengths. And then as you build teams of people, whether it's, you know, whether you're a manager and you're building a, a team that's formerly your team, or it's just, it's a, it's a loose confederation of people that you're bringing together for a project. Think about those personality types and how they interact and, and what may be missing from your team. Because, you know, if you have sort of this a wide representation, representation of different people, um, you're going to be more successful. Yeah, absolutely. Understanding yourself and your strengths and your weaknesses and being able to match it with other people. That's, yeah, yeah. that's, that's. And I, I mean, I, you know, one of the things, diversity is so important, right? You know, having a diverse team and a diverse, you know, from diverse backgrounds, diverse, you know, ethnicities, diverse personality types, all of those things, those teams succeed much, much better, you know, than, than those who are not. So um, it's all interrelated in my book. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, when you take personality tests, what does it usually identify you as? 
Um, so I'm an extrovert, uh, not surprising. Uh, so the, on this particular one I was mentioning, I'm what's called a presenter. And so it's, uh, it's about, you know, like I love being out there talking to people, interacting with people, exchanging ideas and collaborating is that those are very common themes for me. That's, that's interesting. Yeah. And you're well, obviously well suited for your position right now, but uh, I mean, that is something that would really throw a lot of people in panic. The idea of getting out there and being with people and presenting ideas, that's, that's terrifying to a lot of folks. So for sure, for it's, sure. yeah. it's great to have diversity. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Brian, thank you so much for, for joining us today on the show. We really appreciate it. Uh, thank you to everyone who tuned in. I hope that y'all go out there and have a very blessed week and happy Friday. Thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah. Off. Take care.